Hey y'all, it's Brian, the Ramblin' Tech. And today we are going to install PFSense on Proxmox. So you've got a Proxmox server, you've got all of that set up, you've set up a few VMs, but now you want to build that network. And let's go ahead and install PFSense and get that set up for us. So that way we can isolate our Proxmox or our home lab from our actual production or home network. So let's jump over here on to Proxmox and get into installing PFSense. All right, y'all, so I am here on my Proxmox server. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to PVE. I do know that I have two NICs on my Proxmox server. If you do not have two NICs on it, you will need to go get a piece, um, one that you can add to your PFC, to your Proxmox server. You can do a USB or a PCI. I would say if you are able to do a PCI and add an expansion card in there, that will be best. I will put some links to some PCI expansion cards or some PCI network cards in the description below. If you do go in and buy them, there will be a commission. I will make a percentage off that at no cost to you. But go ahead, if you do have two multiple NICs like I do, we are good to go. So the first thing that we need to do before we need get it is we need to download PFSense. You'll go to pfsense.org and forward slash downloads. Right here where it says architecture, we're gonna go and select AMD 64 installer ISO and then for your mirror, you're gonna click where it is closest to you. I am in the United States, so Austin, Texas is gonna be close to me. Go ahead and click download. Once it has downloaded, you're gonna come over here to your Proxmox server. If you do have a network share that you're already using for your ISOs, that is where I would install it. But if you don't, and you're just using your Proxmox local storage for right now, that is perfectly okay. But you'll come here to local and you can upload your ISOs right here. And to do that, you're gonna click upload, select where that folder, where you downloaded that to, and select that ISO and click upload. I've already installed, or I've already uploaded my PFSense. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and create that VM. Once you come up here, you can, I like to use the button. You're gonna click create VM. We're gonna leave it, I, everything 103 sounds good to me. That is just so, we VMID is what's how Proxmox knows which virtual machine you are talking to and how it identifies it. And we are going to give it a name that we can read. And I'm going to just call this PFSense. We're going to click next. We're going to select the storage where that we installed that ISO or uploaded that ISO to. We're going to select PFSense and next. Leave system. We're going to leave that as default. Disk, 32 will be fine. I'm going to give mine four cores. And I'm going to change my CPU type from x86-64 to host. Click next, memory. I'm going to give mine four gigs, so 496. And next, and we're going to leave this vert VMBR0. We're going to go ahead and leave that going to verify that everything is set up correctly and you want to ver you want to make sure that start after created or start after start after created or boot after created is not selected you'll go ahead and click finish then we're going to sit over here and you can see 103 pf sense has came up now we need to create another virtual nick using one of those NICs that we have on our Proxmox server. So we're gonna come up here to PVE. You'll come to summary, or you'll, then you will come to network, go to create, and we are gonna do Linux bridge. Now I am going to use this um, F1. So we're gonna leave it as VMBR1. And our bridge port is going, we have to type in the name of that bridge or of that nick that we want to use we're going to select create you do not have to fill any of this in we do create now it will you will need to click apply configuration and it will change 
right here it will say no you need to apply configuration for it to say yes once that does say yes and that configuration has been applied jump back over to your pf sense vm we're going to go to hardware and then we're going to go add network device vm br1 select next and we are good to go now we're going to go to console and hit start. Now this will take a few minutes to kind of get into PFSense. Once it's there, we will start installing. I'll fast forward through this part while it's booting up. All right, y'all. So now we have popped right here. We're gonna go ahead and select hit accept. And then we are going to do install PFSense and hit enter. Right here, when you, how would you like to your partitions? We're just going to use the auto um, ZFS guided root on ZFS. And then once it comes here, proceed with installation. And um, we're going to leave it as striped, no redundancy. We're going to click OK. We're going to use the space bar to select this one, the DA0QEM. And we are going to select yes because we do know that it is going to destroy all of the stuff on there. Now this will take a few more minutes for it to install. So I'll fast forward through this part one more time. All right, y'all. So that has installed and now it needs to go ahead and reboot. We're going to go in, we're going to reboot. So once we get here and it is prompted for us to enter our WAN interface name, <clears throat> I'm going to do VT net zero if this is not right we can change it in once we get it in or once we get to our boot menu so we we're going to do that and then we're going to type vt net one enter we're going to do y for um do you want to proceed with that yes all right y'all so now our pf sense has been installed and we are up to go so you can see right here that I have a WAN address of 10101.147. Yours may be different. That is going to be whatever your firewall or your router gives this virtual machine. So we are going to leave that alone for right now. And then if you look right here that the WAN is going to be 1921681. So this will be the, the IP address of the firewall that of how so you can get to the GUI of this firewall and go ahead and start to set it up. But if I'll come right here and try to hit that 192.168.1.1, it will not respond for me because from by default, even though I am on that 10 100 network with my with my pc that i'm working on right now you are not able to communicate with your firewall from the outside that is by default we will have to change that if we want to communicate from one side to the other but what we're going to go ahead and do is now that we've got this set up on our network let's change over our pf or our ubuntu desktop so that it is on that network. I'll go ahead and log in here, open up terminal, run if config, and right here, you can see that this current network is 10101.146. I wanna change that. So we're gonna come to, we're gonna go to hardware, and then network device, we are going to remove this network device and we're going to add VMBR1. We're gonna wrap, um, add VMBR1 because that is the LAN port that we have selected as for our VFSense firewall. Select add, go over here to console and we are going to reboot reboot our Ubuntu desktop 
and let it go ahead and add that nick in once yours is booted up go ahead and log in if you type your password right there you go so now that that now that we have logged into our ubuntu desktop go ahead and type in terminal run if config one more time and you can see that we have a 192.168.1.100. So from here, go ahead and that Firefox. We're going to go to 192.168.1.1. Advance, because this is it. We know that it is okay safe for us because we just installed it. We are here on our PFSense. PFSense has installed and it is actually handing out DHCP to the VMs that you have specified and changed over to that virtual, to that VM VR1. In, a, in an upcoming video, I will show you how to set up PFSense for your home lab and make it so that you can start learning a little bit about networking and keeping your home lab safe or even your home network safe. So I'll see you in the next one and please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you then.